Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We are carrying on with this, a new video every couple of days, apparently, because I am hooked. So, uh, briefest of updates, uh, Bioware has psychological issues and seem to be venting them in this game. Um, first game, they killed Jenkins. Sad. Second game, they killed me. Sad. This game, they killed Earth, and specifically a child. Like, they aimed it. Some guy had a really annoying neighbour with a kid and decided to take it out on them. Um, that led us to Mars in a bid to escape. Um, we went to Mars and were told by Hatchet Man to go and find some data, where we found Liara who is using her new capacity as a shadow broker, I guess. Uh, hey, what? Stupid keeper? Oh, I'm in his way. Fair enough. That, that's fair. Um, yeah, using her new capacity as a shadow broker to look into different things. And we have found a weapon that we're kind of building, but we don't know what it is. So Elusive Man was there and had a robot girl who killed the shit out of Ashley. So, uh, but we killed it, so it's fine. And uh, James drove like you sort of do in rush hour traffic uh, and smashed into them to stop them from getting away. Bit of a clusterfuck, bit of a beginning, but amazing start. And we are now left on the Citadel with the ability to free roam. Um, we've got Medical Center and the Council to go to. Uh, just going to have a little look around here. I played around with the audio settings. I want the dialogue on the game to show up a lot more. So hopefully that will happen. Aha, Avina. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to the Citadel. This is Docking Bay D-24. Note that due to recent events, official identification and weapons permits may be requested by CSEC personnel for routine verification. I'm pretty sure I said I was dead when I went to see Bailey. <laughs> like he said, do you want me to put you on the system? I went, nah, I'm better dead. Uh, other Citadel areas, please. Any other important areas I should know about? Docking Bay E-24 has been repurposed into temporary housing to accommodate the recent influx of civilians to the Citadel. If you wish to contact your species' official Citadel representative, please go to Citadel Embassies. For medical needs, the Presidium offers leading-edge care at the Huerta Memorial Hospital. The Presidium Commons has been a cultural mainstay since the Council was first established at the Citadel. Okay, cool. Uh recent influx of people coming in are the reapers elsewhere as well then uh, routine verification what's with the heightened security new screening fields have been added in order to speed up processing at the security stations in each docking area citadel security screening technology uses highly advanced biometric authentication systems developed by the certa foundation Please note that any attempt to circumvent Citadel security measures will result <laughs> in immediate incarceration. That's fair. Uh, local features, what's here? What else is in the area? You are standing in docking area D24. According to your biometrics file, you are cleared to access further information about this bay. This is the airlock currently assigned to the Systems Alliance ship Normandy. If you look out the bay window, you can see one of the many magnificent vistas for which the Citadel is renowned. The one thing is, you have to be a certain person to unlock the information, but she's saying it out loud. So if you don't have clearance, just hang around long enough and somebody will walk past with the clearance and you can hear. Um, waiting area. What about that room over there? The waiting area is for those who wish to speak to our new arrivals. It is located next to security processing. Well, let's have a look down there then. That's all. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. Thank you, Cortana. Okay. First deployment is somewhere near Palavan. Reports say not to depend on comms. I'll leave vid messages then, and you can do the same. Well, they said that due to concerns about signal congestion, they're supposed to avoid sending messages at all. 
They're trying to keep war data coming through, so every data packet counts. So how am I supposed to talk with you then? Ah, yes. So I'm guessing there is war for other people as well, not just us. <clears throat> the realities of that, they might not have even seen war in their lifetimes. Did Commander Shepard escape? No. He did, didn't he? So why would he be here unless he's seeing the council? Ma'am, I can't talk about that. You don't have to. Commander Shepard. <laughs> Hello. What's going on here? Commander, just who I was looking for. Diana Allers, Alliance News Network. I think we can help each other. I suppose you want an interview. Even better. I'm a military reporter with a show called Battle Space. We're carried on just about all council planets. My producers want me embedded on a human ship, and I want that ship to be the Normandy. Why would I want that? I know that voice. Wars can be won or lost in the editing room, and this war needs to be won. I've got Alliance security clearance and operate without a crew. You get veto power over the segments I file. Can you handle an arrangement like that, or do I keep looking? Well, hmm. <clears throat> I've dealt with two reporters before. Kalisa Al Jalani was the, quite frankly, bitch, uh, the one trying to catch me out on things. And I can't remember the name of the other one. The good one. Ah, oh, I'm going to wrap my brains there. Uh, the one we helped out, she wanted Fisk's. Um, Fisk, Fist, Wilson Fisk. Um, he they wanted uh, Fist's data file or something. Let's do a trial run, but if I run into one of them, I might prefer to have them on the ship. Tell your producers yes for now. We'll see how it works out. Propaganda is good as soon as possible. Any questions? How much gear can I bring? One foot locker. Aye, aye, Commander. One foot locker. Okay. No one else? Can we go through there? War asset. I mean, propaganda is an asset to war. That's fair enough. What is this place? Elevator. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please. Okay, we can only go to two of them. Um, let's go to the hospital. Let's see how Ashley is. Even though she did rub me up the wrong way. Now arriving at Huerta Memorial. Hospital. Right. Already, it seems a little bit more involved than the Citadel was in the second game. In the second game, it felt a little bit. And you only want to talk to another Asari. Yes. Can I have a gun? I'm sorry, no. Maybe I could be transferred to another hospital then. Someplace unsecured. Huh. I could have a gun then, right? No. And no humans. And wherever you transfer me, it, it, it shouldn't have humans. Okay. The humans are our allies. You don't trust them? No, it's not that. I... How are my eyes? What, what, what color are they right now? Maybe you could tell me what happened. Okay, PTSD is serious. What have we got here? Search supplies. Medigel. Uh, how many credits do I have? I have 35,000. So we'll buy some Medigel. Flowers. Candy assortment. Uh, a deluxe selection of chocolates, hard candies and caramels. Warning, these sweets are suitable only for levo amino acid based life forms. Tally and Garrus are dextro amino. Thank you for coming Rumi. To How can we help you? The words of Rumi, a 13th century earth poet, has been continuously in print since the 20th century. The edition of his poems was created a few years ago to mark the 900th anniversary of his death. Tear Songs of the Plains, avant garde poetry by the infamous Elcor performance artist Noctric Tor. 
Critics agree that while Tor employs striking imagery, his verse structure suffers from an undisciplined Thank laziness. And Love Fell, a book of free verse by reclusive Asari poet Techilis Bell. This sharp, pessimistic satire questions the ability of sentient races to rise above basic bloodshed. It's been a bestseller for decades. Among the Multitude, a collection of verses by Walt Whitman, the 19th century earth poet, for those that watch Breaking Bad, you'll know him. Uh, a percentage of each purchase goes to the Whitman Foundation, a charitable organisation that provides hospital care to those who can't afford it. This volume of poems by Alfred Tennyson is a newly released edition that was printed in extremely limited quantities by Oxford Press. This version is highly sought after by book collectors. Oh, hang on. Ashley likes poetry, doesn't she? Is this for romancing her? You can buy her flowers, and I bet you she won't like them. Candies, probably won't like them. Poetry, she will like. But she spoke of Tennyson in the first game, didn't she? So either that will give her a Bible. No, we're going to buy her some Tennyson. I mean, I could just buy them all. I have enough money. We'll see if she likes this. Hello. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to Huerta Memorial Hospital. The human specialist medical officer in charge is Dr. Michel. Also, please note that specialists for all known Citadel species are on call. Please ensure that you observe proper decontamination protocols at all times while in this area. Okay. Uh, other Citadel areas? Any other important areas I should know about? The Normandy is currently docked in D24, which is tagged to your biometric. <laughs> yes, I've just been there. Docking bay E24 has been repurposed into temporary housing to accommodate the recent influx of civilians to the Citadel. If you wish to contact your species' official Citadel representative, please go to Citadel Embassies. The Presidium Commons has been a cultural mainstay since the Council was first established at the Citadel. So, she said that there's specialists for any species. You can really cover treatment for any kind of species here? Huerta Memorial surpasses all requirements needed for any multi-species medical facility. This facility's attendant levels can also replicate the living conditions needed to accommodate other, more exotic species. Oh, interesting. Aquatic environments, for yeah. example, are available on short notice. And, and dry places for drill. Interesting. What about the medical staff? How do they deal with so many species? they got to be smart. All personnel are required to undergo mandatory and regular psychological evaluations, as well as refresher courses. Hospital administration understands how difficult it can be for staff to deal with such a wide variety of patients. It is imperative they be offered the support needed to retain their current high standards. Yeah, fair enough. Um, any local features? What else is in the area? The Huerta Memorial Hospital has experts from every major race and residency, with many specializing in Xeno medicine. The facility works with prestigious medical universities from around the galaxy, offering internships to residents and nurses. With access to cutting-edge technology and support from major pharmaceutical companies, the hospital ensures the best care to its patients. Damn. Is there health insurance? <laughs> or uh, the... Was it Huerta... Memorial? Huerta Memorial? Where'd the hospital get its name? It is named after President Christopher Huerta of Huerta. First United North American States. The donor who requested the tribute expressed the desire to remain anonymous. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thank you. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. So it wasn't Huerta himself that did it. Somebody did it for Huerta. And wishes to remain anonymous. Okay. Uh, might do a bit of shopping later on. ATM. <laughs> no guns allowed. No pistols allowed, I should say. Uh, oh, hello. Who are you two? Dr. Michelle. Commander Shepard, good to see you. Dr. Michelle, it's been a long time. 
You've come a long way from that small clinic down in the wards. Because of you, I don't know where I'd be if you hadn't dealt with Fist and his thugs. Darius's now friend! I'm in a position in the Presidium Clinic. You gave me this chance. Holy shit, she's in charge here. About Lieutenant Commander Williams? Yeah! Uh, that Avina said there's a Dr. Michelle in charge of everything. Garrus's friend! She had this little pokey ward. Uh, ward ho hospital thing. How's Ashley doing? The head trauma was severe, but we reduced the swelling quickly. These types of injury can go either way. She hasn't regained consciousness yet, but her vitals are strong, so I'm optimistic. You can go see her if you like. She's just on the arm. Can I replace Chakwas? Oh, I wonder if Chakwas would have been here or whether she'd already be on the Normandy and I wouldn't get that option. Well, I mean, Garrus will be happy. Please? We could use a doctor of your caliber on the Normandy. I'm honored you'd consider me, but I do have responsibilities here. Oh, she doesn't actually want to go. Uh, but we kind of need a doctor and we don't have one. I'm not going to say our mission's more important, but it is true. If you're on our ship, you will be saving trillions even. The Normandy may be the key to winning this war. If we fail, all could be lost. You'd make a huge difference out there with us. More than you can ever do here. Hmm. Well... Our staff is excellent. The Presidium would be in good hands. I pack my bags and tell Dr. Arrington she's received a promotion. Oh, wow! We've actually got her on the ship now. She's Chakwas 2.0. Um, yeah, Garrus is going to be ecstatic. Uh, refugees. This war may leave a lot of injured people homeless. Can the Citadel clinics care for them all? We're fine now, but I'm worried. Every hospital on the Citadel is preparing for the worst. I hear the docks are tightly controlled, but we just can't leave people floating out there forever. Yeah. Uh, how are the supplies then? With the amount of people coming in, you've got to be running out. How are your medical supplies holding up? We're well stocked now, but I can't say I'm not worried about the future. We've posted guards on our reserves. War profiteering has already begun. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So it's not just Earth. Everyone's feeling this. The war has begun. Uh, how are the staff here that you're leaving on their own now? With a center of this size, you must have a lot of direct reports. We've got 12 full-time doctors and over 50 support staff. Nice. It can be overwhelming, quite different from my days in the wards. Well, you're not in the wards anymore. I'll see you on the Normandy, Doctor. See you there. I just need to make a few more preparations. Nice! Okay, cool. That nice little... Stylish French accent is going to be looking uh It's gonna be looking after us. Oh, thank you for scanning me. Oh touch and go. Good work on the plane. Narrow swing still direct toward the back. Our PSC hasn't been spotted in space or yet. Need to back here. Oh There's lots of little stories going on in the background, which I really like. Maybe a little immersion breaking, but if I do hear a conversation, I will just stop and listen to it. <laughs> Even if it is just like, I hate humans, and I'm standing right next to him going, hello. Uh, oh, hello. Oh, Ashley. Ash. Hey. It's Shepard. I should have known you'd pull through. You're stubborn. Always were. Scared me pretty bad back there on Mars. I just wanted to check in on you. See how you're doing. <laughs> You'll be fine. Now, I'm thinking about you. The love is still there, even though we've had our spat. Despite all this, it's good seeing you again, Ash. Get some rest, okay? Come by when you're feeling better. I can't believe they upgraded her and made her look stunning. New haircut. If you need anything, Doc. Let me know. Just to do this. Okay, 
you take care. She put on her breakup armor. I'll see you soon. And then a robot knocked seven bells of stuffing out of her. Uh. Hello? I'm Commander Shepard. I can just walk around anywhere I like in this hospital. Hi, Doctor. Didn't expect to see you again so soon. Well, we need to prescribe you another round of antibiotics. Can I consult? For when I ship out? I have some bad news. Your squad applied the Medigel correctly, but infection had already set in by the time they found you. I'm sorry. I'm afraid we have to remove your leg below the knee. What? But I, I, I don't understand. It, it doesn't even hurt. It would if we took you off the painkillers, Lieutenant. Wow. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be really interesting for me because I. I have a bit of a, a weakness, I guess, to stories of war, uh, injuries, PTSD. People getting blown up because people above them want a couple of hundred feet more land. It's just, it, it never sits right with me. And I do get a little emotional with it sometimes. So... We've abandoned a whole cluster. Shit. Whoa, 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 what's that? The Paterian hegem hegemony has been destroyed. Welcome, Commander uh, we'll go to Please Citadel Embassies. Moment, yeah, I've got a bit of a weakness to it, so if I keep seeing these sort of war veterans being injured, it's, uh, that's going to hit home. That's going to be very personal. I love how it's the Turian Empire. It's just very Roman. It's just very militaristic. It's we have the Empire. Uh, Avina, tell me about this place. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to Citadel Embassies. The current human ambassador is Dominic Osova. Commander Bailey is the CSEC officer on duty. You will find him in the Citadel Security District Office. The ambassador is Dominic Asoba. Oh, yeah, we made Udina counselor and Anderson's not here. Asoba. Well, I'll get to talking to him in a bit. Uh, anywhere else? Any other important areas I should know about? The Normandy is currently docked. That's what I said before. For medical needs, the Presidium. The Presidium Commons has been a cultural mainstay since the council. Uh, local features, that's the same as before. That's it. Please speak with me again. Okay. Human Embassy, 31st floor. Just want to pick up as many different conversations as I can. Contact request. Yes, of course, ma'am. But the notes on his file state he's not under a contact ban. Oh, you already looked. How kind of you. I'm just so worried. It's not like him to go quiet for so long. As soon as I get news, ma'am, I'll let you know as soon as I get news. Thank you. You're such a nice young woman. You know. You remind me of my daughter in law. Hmm. 
That's maybe I'm over uh, jumping forward a little bit there, but that kind of seems maybe she might have dementia or something, or constantly going back, or maybe even it's just trauma inducing, a trauma induced memory loss. I. Oh man. There is no anti-humanity conspiracy here, Ms. Al Jalani. The council's simply not granting interviews at this time. Talking of Al Jalani. My viewers are going to know that CSEC and the council are denying them access. Listen, lady, you think I like playing gatekeeper between the paparazzi and the politicians? I don't have time to babysit them, and I'm not here to hold your hand. Well, I'm camping out until I'm granted an audience. Fine. I hope you brought a sleeping bag. <laughs> You know what? Maybe it was a good idea to promote him, just because he knows how to deal with shit. Commander Shepard? Commander, humanity has questions. Lovely. Damn press. <laughs> Say. See you're keeping the peace. Yeah, I feel like a glorified doorman. Most people would see it as a move up. Wedged in here with all the stuffed shirts? I'd rather be back down on the streets. I appreciate the higher pay grade, but I'm not a political creature. Yeah, okay, so he's the last person I would promote. And he doesn't even want the promotion. If you didn't want to be upped, why'd you accept? <laughs> you don't say no to Councillor Udina. Well, maybe you would, but I gotta live here. I know, squeaky wheel gets the oil, but I didn't lobby for a promotion like some other officers. I'm not even sure why he picked me. I never know with politicians. I hate political BS. Udina wants you specifically as the doorman to the council? Because you know how to bend the rules? Is Udina bending some rules? We'll go talk to Udina. Udina. I'm suspicious of this because he's a bent cop. Why would you promote him? And now he says that Udina specifically asked him. And he didn't even lobby for a promotion. Uh, just bear with it, dude. Like, Don't lose your edge. You might need it. Yeah, true. I oh, wouldn't mind an excuse to get my fingers dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me about Earth. You and me both. I haven't been back in years. No, I may never. If this ain't the end of days, it's pretty damn close. My theory with him is that he had kids, or at least a kid, because of how he talked to Thane and uh, Krios. I'm up to my neck in trouble, but if no. there's anything you need, I'll do my damnedest. Koliat, 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 Krios. Oh wow! Um, well, family is an option, so I get to see. I'm basically he was so understanding with Thane that it made me think he's abandoned a kid before. Um, how's the war going? Is the Citadel gearing up for war? Uh, there's a false sense of security here. Even people from worlds that have gone down act like they're safe. Well, I guess it's not just human nature. We all lie to ourselves to deal with horror. How's the Citadel as a whole? Anything important going on around here? <laughs> you kidding? With the Reapers running roughshod through the galaxy, it seems like the Council is in constant session. We got more ambassadors and dignitaries here than ever before pleading their cases. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. They've really got no idea. I mean, they're hearing stuff, but I'd love to see who is the new council, because they wouldn't even give me a, a meeting in Mass Effect 2. Thought things were relatively quiet here. Well, compared to where you're coming from, sure. But the war is being felt everywhere. Millions across the galaxy have been displaced. And most of them come here. Must have you doing somersaults. <laughs> yeah, already allocated the bulk of my men to customs, but we're still overtaxed, cataloging and processing them all. Well, tell me about your promotion then. You did must have done well. It was Udina who made you a commander, huh? Yeah, he's become an even bigger shot around here. Got a lot of ambition. He suspected Executor Palin was conspiring against the Council and had me investigate. Find anything incriminating? Yeah, enough to arrest him. When Palin resisted, um, I was forced to kill him. What? Udina rewarded me with the promotion. And near as I can tell, being a commander just means I'm putting out different fires. 
Palin was the leader of CSEC, wasn't he? Executor Palin. I think he was. Udina had you investigate him for what? Corruption? And whatever it was was so big that he was willing to get killed over it. Ah, that's not quite adding up. Uh, family, the big one. You got loved ones out there? A kid? Somewhere. Ex-wife I lost track of, and... And a son and daughter. Yeah. They're still on Earth. I'm sorry, Bailey. Yeah, I'm just like everyone else. I'm losing myself and things I can control. And at the moment, that means creating the illusion of security here. No time for talk, then. We both have jobs to do, Bailey. I suggest we do them. Yep. Good talking to you, Shepard. I like him. I do like him. He's a bent cop, but I like him. Um, Yeah, yeah, the way he talked to Thane was just like, look, dude, you've got a second chance. Like, just take it. Oh, I can't go in there. Oh. It's a dead end. Lots of people talking, which means... Council room. Commander, Councillor Udina said you'd be coming. If you'll follow me, the council is already in session. Hmm. Councillor, the Reapers are in our space as well. Earth is no more or less important than any council homeworld. Oh, he looks different. But Earth was the first council world hit. By our reports, it faces the brunt of the attack. How do you know this is the brunt? New Reaper fronts are opening up everywhere. Email. Previous uh, Solarian Council was mailed. Earth was attacked. A full scale invasion. I'm Shepard, by the way. Just the beginning. I killed your predecessors. We need your help. Everything you can spare. Earth may be suffering, but our worlds are falling too. The Turians have lost Tatris. We must fight this enemy together. Need I remind you that the last time we fought the Reapers, Shepard sacrificed the Council to protect human interests. No, to protect True. more people. But in the end, we survived because we followed Shepard's lead. And what if that's not enough this time? The reports are dire. If we throw everything we have at the Reapers on Earth and lose, what then? I don't expect you to follow me without a plan. Counselors, we have that plan. A blueprint created by the Protheans during their war with the Reapers. Prothean? What is it exactly? We're still piecing it together. But it appears to be a weapon of some sort. And this is capable of destroying the Reapers? So it would seem. <laughs> Better shot than it's we got. Immense and intricate. This is a fool's errand. The Protheans were wiped out by the Reapers. Clearly, the weapon is flawed. It was incomplete. There was a missing component here. Something referred to only as the Catalyst. But they ran out of time before they could finish building it. Do you believe in this, Shepard? After what you've seen of the Reapers? I honestly, me, I don't really believe it. Because I think it's just all too coincidental that all oh, this whole time we had this plan. We could have been building it when we first got to Mars. But I believe in trying. Liara believes it can work. And so do I. And Udina's right. We need to stand together. Now more than ever. The Reapers won't stop at Earth. They'll destroy every organic being in the galaxy if we don't find a way to stop them. Come on. What are you shaking your head for? The Council cannot give Earth the military support it needs. Our own planets must come first. The Salarian Union is convening a summit amongst our species. If we can secure our own borders, we may be able to aid you. Our fleets are also engaged. Honesty is all I can offer, Commander. I will not make a promise of rescue that I cannot keep. Oh, and just walk away. Shepard, meet me in my office. I hope that's an offer of support. I'll be digging up what I can on this Prothean device, Shepard. Hmm. They're a bunch of self-concerned jackasses, Shepard. 
We may have a spot on the council, but humanity will always be considered second rate. How can they be so blind? Um. Commander, I can't give you what you're asking for, but I can tell you how to get it. I'm listening. Alvin's prime Mark Bedorian is the one that called the war summit. He's your kind of man, open to extreme solutions. <laughs> Trouble is, he didn't get out of Falavan's system when the Reapers attacked. We don't know if he's alive. He's essential to the summit. If the Normandy could extract him without being detected. Favor for a favor. I'd say that's pretty legit. I mean, I don't expect you to throw everything for me to help. You want me to rest without him wanting something? He considers helping Earth. Put bluntly, yes. I shouldn't even be telling you about it. But we need Fedorian alive, and your ship can get him. Save the Primarch, gain an ally. One with the power to grant you what you're looking for. While the Reapers ravage Earth. Your Love his eyes. Was right. We need to work together. This is the best way to get that. <clears throat> Our intel says Primarch Fedorian is on Falavan's largest moon. Get in and out undetected, and he'll take care of the rest. Good luck, Commander. You're gonna need it. Okay. There is one other thing. The Council has agreed to reinstate your Spectre status. <laughs> Yay! But there are certain resources that will be made available to you. Cool. Good luck. Well, that went well. It's a start. I'll talk to the others in the meantime. See if we can support this summit. Move things along. Thanks. You see... Here's the issue. Realistically... We should... Kind of... Oh. Uh, we should... Strategically not save earth i know it's a terrible thing to say but whilst they're doing that they're just dis they're distracted what we need to do is protect the next planet hmm. oh, i beg your pardon we need to try and get in somewhere and actually dig in and be the first line of defense where the planet can also fight back some sort of cannons, which I'm guessing they have, on on the planets to fire into space. We're already fighting a losing war, completely losing, annihilated war on Earth. We've got to try and fight back somewhere else, and unfortunately it doesn't make sense for everyone to come to Earth to get wiped out, because then the Reapers just walk over everyone. The Council. All I can think is that the more things change, the more they stay the same. I killed one council. I'm not, not going to kill another. That phrase, fatalism, not what men and women should aspire to. If we don't figure out something, maybe later will be an epitaph on a mass grave of eleven billion. God. I know what I'm going to do. That's a line. What are you going to do? Humanity is as feared as we are loved. Hopefully, that works in our favor now. I'll try to get financial aid from as many worlds as I can. Maybe manpower, a few armed ships. I'll institute a draft in our colonies and order all civilian ships armed. Work on the Prothean device will be around the clock. Ow. I mean, that's that's legit. Like, um, anything on Earth that you've heard of? Any news from Earth? That is constant news. All of it bad. Yeah. The Reapers are destroying satellites and the old nuclear missile silos, along with everything else that could help. We have a handful of quantum entanglers spread out over the continents. All other communication is cut. See, the Reapers are smart. They're not just smashing down and randomly killing. They're hitting, I'm guessing, big cities. And then destroying the missile silos, destroying our weaponry. Uh, any leverage with the Council? What's your read on the Councillors? Any angles I could pursue? Counselor Irissa is not like her predecessor. She is colder. If she has her hand on your throat, she will squeeze. Eshil, there you might find some traction. 
practical. She might make Machiavelli turn pale, but that's a Delatrace for you. Frankly, it's good Quentius spoke with you. His home world is in the most trouble, and he's looking for a way out. That speaks opportunity. Okay. So the Asari one was the uh, the one that will choke the shit out of me. Um, Ashiel is the uh, Dalatras. So it's Salarian. And then Quintius. You're a Citadel Counselor. Don't you have options when the others block you like this? With Parliament destroyed and Shastri gone, I have more power than any human in history. But today, you saw how little that is. Rest assured, I will not be counted out long. I know I can move mountains. Do not lose sight of that, because the task before us is moving planets. <laughs> get some results, man. You can yell at me to go and get them. You need to get them, too. That sounds like you won't succeed. I helped you into this office because I thought you'd be effective. You need a carrot or a stick to drive a mule, and humanity has neither right now. Our armada is tied down fighting or fleeing. With Earth's calm buoys gone, our economy is reduced to an IOU. But leave that part to me. I will lean on our colonies for all they're worth, and I can broker enough trade to repair and resupply Hackett's fleet. Genuinely, that's all I can ask for, so that is good. Any favours, any loans, any things that we've done to save people, just len lean on that, because there's no point having a bank account if you're dead. So if the Reapers are going to wipe everyone out, our bank accounts may as well be zero or in debt. Like, spend it all. Uh, personal situation. How you doing, man? Wife? Kids? Did you know a lot of people on Earth? Many. It's monstrous to think of them being snuffed out, of course. But the part that gets me is Arcturus. I must know... I must have known most of the Alliance Parliament on a first-name basis. I required a second VI just to track all their birthdays and anniversaries. Rose garden <laughs> stuff, but to have it all gone. Yeah. I should go. I should I'll be go. here. I should go. Pretty sure I say that to everyone. I should go. Oh, that was red. Hello. Spectre status. So, this is Spectre Station. Spectre Terminal. Welcome to the Spectre Information Processing Center. This terminal offers secure information access and support for authorization of covert operations or requisitions. It is restricted to operatives currently on active duty with special tactics and reconnaissance. Any operation requiring payment can be executed at the terminal nearby, which supports secure and untraceable financial transactions. We'll launder your money. Oh, wow. Quarry and Pilgrim. Jen Volan Na Nanima. Na Nima. Uh, Tali was Vas Nima. Na Nima. Uh, on the Citadel, received a large credit transfer from the fleet. Jen Volan purchased tech, including high end weapon mounts and kinetic barrier emitters, from several ship service centers. On Ilium, another Quarian pilgrim, unidentified, was observed searching for a ship traveling close to the Perseus Vale. The Pilgrim was later heard saying that his pilgrimage was recalled. Data suggests the Quarian fleet is withdrawing its pilgrims and upgrading ships for combat somewhere near the Perseus Vale. This could be a reaction to the Reaper invasion, but no formal offer or request for assistance has come. Intel suggests the Quarians may instead be preparing for conflict with Geth. Right. So the whole world's going to die and they're going to spend their resources fighting tin can robots. Oh, oh, hello. So that uh, I've got 31,000 and this is all way too expensive for me. Way too expensive. Uh, Black Widow. So sniper rifle, the Wraith. Is a shotgun? Yeah, quick draw shotgun. Uh, it's banned in Citadel space. <laughs> the Paladin. Surprisingly small for its hitting power. Unquestionably more powerful. That might be what I want to go for. Like a proper little... Ooh, the Cerberus Harrier. The Cerberus modified Matic rifles are fully automatic. A fully automatic ra uh, Matic. Hell yes. 
stays on target but delivers slightly less punch per round. Okay. Slightly less punch, but that's still good. The Typhoon... Has that got a shield on the front? A light machine gun featuring a face shield. Um, lots of recoil. The Piranha. Assault shotgun designed for the Reaper War. Yes. The Hurricane. Lower accuracy. Yeah, I don't have the best accuracy to begin with. Crusader, bruised and bloody Alliance Marines on Torfen attributed their survival against waves of Batarian mercenaries to the precision and stopping power of the Crusader. Valiant Sniper Rifle. The Eagle. Is that the Desert Eagle? Like a proper Clint Eastwood... Not Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah, Clint Eastwood. Uh, Dirty Harry. Uh, the impressive fiddle. I like it. It's compact. Fully automatic. Oh, no, 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 no. That's that's not a Desert Eagle. N7 Defender Armor. Okay. I want the most powerful single-shot pistol. Uh, we've got nothing there. Will this fill up with spectres as the game goes on? Enter the shooting range. Oh, we're in combat mode. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like that. So I can, I can swap around, play with different things. Let's play with that. Okay, the one denotes how many of them I've got. Let's play around with this then. Target distance. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. As a shotgun goes, um, Vindicator was one I wanted to try out. Oh. Oh no, that's ridiculous recoil for a uh, for a uh, burst weapon. That's solid. That'll always be solid. Okay, that's actually got some meat to it as well. That's pretty decent, but um, no, it's definitely for now at least going to be... That Vindicator was awful. I did not like that at all. We'll have the Katana. We'll have the uh, pistol. It's good, though, that you can... I mean, I wish you could kind of try stuff out before you buy it. Let me fire a few shots, but I guess I'm just going to have to get as much money as possible and buy every single gun. Which I'm not against. That's absolutely fine. Right. Well, interesting. I didn't have, enough, I didn't have any option to talk about uh, Bailey to Udina. Do I've done all these people? Hello. Commander Shepard. Commander, the people of the Alliance have questions. Go on then. Commander Shepard. Kalisa been seen in Algeline. I know you. Isn't it true that you were on Earth when the Reapers attacked? <laughs> How do you justify running away while millions of people on Earth die? Is that the best we can expect from the Alliance? I'm on camera. I came to get help for Earth. For everyone. What about all the people suffering while you play politics with the council? What about them? How can you stand here while our families die? What are you going to do? Kalisa, we're doing everything we can. Before they cut the feeds, there were so many dead. I'm going to stop the Reapers or die trying. But I need your help. Keep asking the hard questions. Don't let the council forget about Earth. I will. Thank you, Commander. Wow, okay. We haven't always seen eye to eye. No, we have not. But I'm glad you're on our side. <laughs> okay. Oh, James. Hello, sir. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Commander. Liara told me the Council's not interested in helping us. Something like that. 
Why would they? Look at this place. There's no war here. People are whispering about it. They're talking about it. But they don't really believe it. No, your kind of place. I take it this is your first time here with the elite of the galaxy? I've been to the Citadel, but never up here on the Presidium. It's not right. It looks pretty, calm and peaceful. But it's not right. It's all just an illusion. It was peaceful. Once. But was it? Really? I mean, when push comes to shove, they're just going to turtle up. Hope it don't hit them too, right? They'd rather believe in this than face the truth. They will. They will eventually. They're in for a rude awakening. Every species will fall. One At by some one. point, the worse. Reapers are going to come here. No shit. Can't believe it's even up for debate. So, you still want to go back to Earth? Hell yeah, but... Bud, you were right. So was Anderson. We can't stop them alone. Besides, it looks like you're going to have your hands full convincing these pendejo politicians to help us. <laughs> and I'm up for it. Whatever it takes. Glad to hear it. I'm going to head down to some of the lower levels where they keep it real. <laughs> you got some spare time? <clears throat> you should come and find me. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Do some shots. Get some tequila. Uh, done everything here? Let's head back down. Uh, I mean, I guess we go back to the Normandy. See, uh, see if we still have everyone. I imagine we do. Where did everyone go? Garrus, Jack? I'm guessing they didn't stay on the Normandy. Shall we go back? That's the Normandy. Uh, hang on. I will just have a very quick check of the journal. <laughs> <clears throat> Priority Palavan. And then the Shrike Abyssal. Prothean Obelisk. Volus Diplomat needs a Prothean Obelisk. Recover it from the Shrike Abyssal and deliver it to him on the Citadel Embassy. Priority Palavan. Primarch Fedorian of the Turian Hierarchy has called a war summit that presents an opportunity for the Alliance to request help building the Crucible. Unfortunately, Fedorian was caught in the Reaper attack on Palavan. Rescued the Turian Primarch from Palavan's moon. Ooh, okay. Well, let's see what state our ship's in, I guess. It's the kid. I'm never going to be able to catch him, am I? What did I just fucking say about soldiers and PTSD? Shepard's breaking apart. Can only be a leader for so long. You are breaking. Liara, can I help you? I've been forwarding the Turian Counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without Council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. Are you all right? <laughs> I've been better. I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. 
There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? <laughs> I feel terrible, but it's not Ash getting hurt. It's everyone back on Earth, and I don't see how that's a renegade option. When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can, and you'll get back there in time to help. I hope you're right. Don't blame yourself, Commander. Commander Shepard, I'm Specialist... Oh, uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. You English? I was just leaving. Do I have an English Commander person? Shepherd, I'm Com Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R&D. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. There weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. It's okay, don't worry. I, I don't run a tight ship in terms of uh, military bravado, so just chill. Slow down, Specialist Trainer. You're doing fine. Thank you. I worked in a lab. I never thought I'd be serving on a ship. Why don't you tell me about the retrofits? <laughs> Come into my room. The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Yes, I heard he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under you, Commander. For as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard, some of our systems require further testing, and Specialist Trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Okay. Wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? <laughs> Edie's an AI. Yeah. Fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. <laughs> Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. I apologize for the deception. Thanks, E.D., and I apologize for all those times I talked about how mm, attractive your voice was. <laughs> anyway, shall I give you a tour? I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. I mean, you're not wrong. In the CIC, like, you'll find the galaxy map. She's a great voice actress. Normandy's destination. You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The War Room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on deck three. I think she's claimed that room. And there you are. Still the same ship as before. It just flies Alliance colors now. Tell me the Alliance didn't Speaking of which, take I my aquarium. I would like to speak to you at the VidCom. Okay, I love her. I think she's awesome. Commander. Dina updated me on your meeting with the council. Sounds like they're running scared. They are useless this entire time. Don't they know I'm the protagonist? The council has been a pain in my ass from day one. I'm done with them. Then what's your plan? I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Solarians. I'll bypass the council and appeal directly to their leadership. Don't know if that really works. That's good. But... I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it. And if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. It is, yeah. I mean, I can kind of see where it's coming from. But when are the Reapers vulnerable? How's Earth? What about Earth, sir? We'll just have to hope Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces can hold out until we've dealt with the enemy. It's a stalling game. I understand. Good. Then make it happen, Commander. 
I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. No problem, Hatchet Man. Hmm. This is an entirely new area of the ship. I don't even know where we are. War terminal. War assets. The people, weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. The overall readiness of the galaxy depends on how effectively these assets will perform in the final battle. Okay. Total military war strength. The minimum needed. I'd rather have the maximum. Alliance. Oh, okay. Alliance Engineering Corps. The Alliance Engineering Corps cuts roads through mountains and builds bases on asteroids. While the bulk of the AEC has active wartime duties, their brightest are helping build the device of Prothean Origin recovered on Mars. Due to the staggering amount of raw materials required, the AEC has been given unprecedented emergency funding for any Alliance resources that will not interfere with the deployment of troops. Huh. The 103 Marine Division... The old saying, every Marine is a rifleman, still holds true in the Alliance. Every Marine enlistee, from clerk to sniper, goes through a period of infantry training. As a result, the 103rd Marine Division is Earth's largest collection of Special Forces soldiers. Officers from notable battles such as the Skillian Blitz and the First Contact War run harsh training exercises in a variety of environments, insisting, insisting that Marines be prepared to storm any beach on any planet. This training has been useful in the Reaper War, as the 103rd can be fighting in an Arctic desert one week, crawling through jungles the next. Hoorah! Admiral Mik Mikhailovich. Where do I know that name from? I know that name from somewhere. When the Reaper called Sovereign attacked the Citadel in 2183, Rear Admiral Boris Mikhailovich led the 63rd Scout Flotilla against it. The 63rd suffered the fewest losses of any Alliance flotilla during the Battle of the Citadel, while providing crucial support for the 5th, Sle 5th Fleet's carriers and dreadnoughts. The Alliance promoted Mikhailovich from Rear Admiral to Admiral after the battle, and tasked him with rebuilding and upgrading his ships. His combat experience with the Reapers has been invaluable in devising strategies against them. I mean... His combat experience with the Reapers. He fought one Reaper. It's not really the same. <laughs> the first fleet was stationed near the Charon Relay when the Reapers invaded the Sol System. By the time Admiral Hackett issued the order to retreat, its size, once the largest in the Alliance Navy, had been cut by half. Commanding Admiral Inns Lindholm made the painful decision to use a tenth of the fleet's remaining vessels as cover so the remainder could escape. Her gamble paid off, as the First Fleet limped out of the relay to rally with the rest of the Alliance folk forces on the run. Imagine being told that. Hey, you guys stay behind. The others are going to be safe. Alliance Third Fleet, stationed at Arcturus. The Third Fleet is headed by Admiral Nitesh Singh. When the Reapers came for the station, Singh had already pulled his command ship, the SSV Logan, back to an ideal firing position for its mass accelerator guns. The Dreadnought's guns managed to slow down a destroyer before it could demolish the Third Fleet, but Singh was forced to retreat in the face of overwhelming oppositions from the Reapers. So the Dreadnought's guns managed to slow down a destroyer before it could demolish the Third Fleet. So that guy saved the day with quick reactions, quick reflexes. Alliance Fifth Fleet. The Fifth Fleet became famous across the galaxy after spearheading Alliance forces at the Battle of the Citadel. It was guarding Arcturus Station when the Reapers attacked. After a bloody and desperate battle, Admiral Hackett gave the order to retreat, sacrificing the entirety of the Alliance Second Fleet to give the Third and Fifth the chance to escape. The 5th Fleet's engineers are busy repairing its damaged vessels, grimly anticipating a return to Earth and revenge against the Reapers. Sacrificed an entire fleet. Diana Allers. Alliance News, broad News Network reporter Diana Allers has been broadcasting from the Normandy, interviewing crew members and high-ranking Alliance officers to give the galaxy an insider's view of the war. Alliance Frigate Normandy SR2. When the original SSV Normandy was destroyed, Cerberus rebuilt the ship from, a, from stolen Alliance plans. Dubbed the SR2, the Alliance took the new Normandy apart and refitted some of its systems with new technology of its own. As a result, the SR2 Normandy is the highest performing frigate in the entire Alliance Navy, and possibly the fastest ship in its class. The Normandy is commanded by Shepard, an Alliance officer and humanity's first Spectre. 
updated. To bolster the Normandy's firepower, Commander Shepard installed a Thanex cannon on the ship's undercarriage. Based on Reaper technology, the powerful weapon fires molten metal accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light. Before taking on the Collectors, reinforce Normandy's superstructure with Solaris armor. This protection, protective layer of carbon nanotube sheeting can withstand temperatures that would normally vaporize more conventional armor. And it was also upgraded with cyclonic barrier technology, allowing the ship's mass effect field projectors to fire rapidly oscillating barriers that deflect rather than directly absorb kinetic shots. Mineral resources. We got a fuck ton of minerals. The material surplus has gone... Oh, so actually I probably should have continued scanning all the planets. Kalisa Bintsinan Algilani. Westerland news reporter Kalisa Bintsinan Algilani. Uh, say that three times fast. Reached out recently to her viewers with a wartime plea for unity and cooperation among all galactic species. Her sincerity touched Extranet viewers and donations for war relief efforts are pouring in, both to the Alliance and its alien allies. Good job. Well, that's a mouthful. And all of those things are working for us. I love that. They're actually, like, totting up everything I've done in the games. So I'm guessing those would be a little bit different if I'd made different choices. Where the fuck am I on the ship? I can't believe oh, the shit. Won't help. Hello. That's true. Well, okay. Thank you for the scan. Oh! Sec Kelly? The Alliance has found a new Cerberus lab on Sanctum. Admiral Hackett would like you to investigate. Are you my new Sec Kelly? Trainer, you've got a lot to live up to. She fed my fish. You better feed my fish. And, but, I mean, you got bonus points for being English. So. Commander, come to check on your new recruit. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. <laughs> I could have helped. Just submit a... I'm sure there's a sort of funding for that sort of thing. Next time you need something, just ask. We're all in this together. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My Basics. brush is a Scission Promark 4. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque to <laughs> massage the gums. It costs 6,000 credits. <laughs> Seriously, I have knocked out my headphones. <laughs> I didn't even hear my shepherd's scathing remark of no. Um... Mass Effect feels the, the the technology that this entire game revolves around that can beam starships and make mass relays and also break up plaque on your guns. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is amazing. I want one of those. Um, you are timid. I'm guessing you're a lab or a bookworm kind of military person, but tell me about why you joined. I joined up in the military anyway. My family didn't have money for university. When the Alliance saw my aptitude scores, they offered me a full scholarship. I served my required years after graduation and decided to stay. I really huh. like the challenges of the lab. Cool. Although, I'm sure I'll grow to love frontline service as well. You're frontline service, but you're still doing lab work, I'm assuming. I mean, you're not coming out with me. I'd be very interested to see if you're like a, a Mordin-like character where you come out with me with tech. Uh, what do you think of the war? I'm surprised you're worrying about a toothbrush. We've got bigger problems right now. Oh, I didn't mean to accuse oh, her of that. Believe me, seeing the Reapers on Earth was terrifying. But I won't help anybody by bursting into tears here in the CIC, will I? Being here on the Normandy helps. If anyone in the galaxy can stop the Reapers, it's you. And if flagging your messages and managing strategic intel helps you in any way, then it's worth it. You like her. Uh... I like her a lot. Uh, your lab job, what were you doing before this? Then? You worked in Alliance R&D? Yes. You'd think quantum entanglement would make communication easy, but imagine incorporating multiple incoming sources 
and then networking them with extrapolations of time lag data to construct a coherent situation GUI. GUI? It's an exciting challenge. Um, for me, anyway. I'm an engineer, I knew what that was. <laughs> Just stony silence. <laughs> 404 not working. Right, well, tell me about you then, because you are English, so I am immediately attracted to you. Where are you from originally? A colony in the Terminus Systems, actually. Though I studied on Earth, at Oxford. <laughs> My parents were from London. They loved Earth, but they wanted the freedom a colony life could offer. London? If they stayed in London, I imagine they'd be dead right now. London? It's like 20 minutes that way for me. Uh, don't talk like that, it'll be fine. A lot of people back on Earth are still alive, and counting on us. Quite true, Commander. Although I imagine they probably attacked the biggest areas first, and London is one of the biggest areas in the UK, and that's where they landed first, I think, for some reason. Although, if they devastate London, you won't be able to tell the difference, so it's fine. Um, I like you. Carry on, Specialist. You can stay. Right. Private Terminal. Special Ops from Stephen Hackett. Shepard, Alliance forces are stretched thin across the galaxy. We need your specific talents for a series of ops. These missions will open doors for the Alliance in places we can't touch through conventional means. We'll deploy operatives to hold point after you've completed your objectives. I need you to head to a Cerberus lab on the planet Sanctum. I'll brief you when you're inbound. Cool, no worries. Reinstatement. This letter formally acknowledges your reinstatement into the Alliance Navy per Admiral David Anderson's recent verbal communication. Under Emergency War Powers Regulation 903.5, you are hereby authorised to assume command of the Normandy SR2. You are directed to begin interdi interdiction or operations against any and all enemies posing a threat to Earth, its colonies and its allies. <laughs> Layman's terms, here's a ship. Hoorah! Emergency flash traffic urgent. Alliance fleet operations. Flash, flash, flash. X1A.34. All Alliance military personnel, this is a galaxy-wide alert for all human territories. Fleet Admiral Hackett has declared threat conditions Sable 1. Enemy presence confirmed in Sol System. Earth under Reaper attack. All Alliance military personnel are directed to evacuate the Sol System at first available opportunity. Do not attempt Earth approach. Heavy enemy resistance reported. Repeat. Do not attempt Earth approach. Further instructions to follow on coded channel. Crimson Tacit. Tacit. <clears throat> Earth-based alliance personnel unable to evacuate are directed to commence any and all necessary countermeasures. All remaining alliance personnel outside Sol Theatre are directed to muster at pre-appointed staging areas and commence offensive combat operations at first available opportunity. In absence of further instructions, independent action is authorised. Wow, okay, so it's just get, if we stop messaging you, trust your training. K... K9? Doctor Who? Subject, my dog. Dear Commander Shepard, I had a contractor working on the Normandy haptic interface when it was in dry dock. Your VIED emailed me to let me know I left my dog mech on board. I'm all the way out in Terra Nova now and would hate for you to go a million clicks out of your way to drop off my dog. Please just take care of her. She likes exploring, sniffing chemical trails and 750 volt outlets. Thank you and sorry for the trouble. I promise you won't be too much of a headache. Andrea Brown. I have a dog. I have a metal dog. I love it. Well, first of all, we need to go and find that. It better not be in my aquarium because it'll be dead. Everything seems to die in my aquarium, apparently. I had fish at the end of the second game. Where the fuck are my fish? And the dead ones, put them back in too. <clears throat> Quarian Fleet by Ruxius Aurelius, ANN contributor. Citadel, where is the Quarian Fleet? The latest intelligence system shows that the Reapers are taking system after system at a feverish pace. Members of all races are fleeing their stations, colonies, and in some case, their homeworlds. This kind of forced exodus might seem especially familiar to the Madic Quarians, who were pushed off their homeworld by the synthetic Geth centuries ago. But as the galaxy pushes back against the Reapers, the Quarians are conspicuously absent. Turian and Alliance spokespeople cannot provide the fleet's current location. They say they have other concerns at the moment. 
Whatever the Quarians are up to, they want it kept secret from the Council. After a refueling stop at Ilium, the fleet left no stated destination, and there are also reports of a galaxy-wide call for all young adult Quarians to abandon their pilgrimages and rejoin the fleet. Greedy and short-sighted powers will always try to gain the upper hand in times of galactic crisis. We can only hope that whatever the Quarians are planning does not interfere with the only thing that should matter, stopping the Reapers. Read Ruxius Rullius's regular column, View of the Empire, exclusively on ANN. Well, that's a very, very good point. And the, I mean, the Quarians are dicks. Like, we found that out on, on Tally's um, loyalty mission. A welcome back gift. While we were in Dry Dock, Joker suggested that a small welcoming gift would be appropriate to have on hand, should you be reinstated as commanding officer. As the ship does not have the capacity to accommodate the dancers, he suggested... Oh, Joker, you know me. Um, I chose something from the Official Systems Alliance catalogue. Soldiers who have held an N7 designation for five years or more are entitled to a commemorative hooded jacket for wear on off-duty hours. You will find it among the selection of casual clothing in your cabin. Yes! A little hoodie! Comfy Shepherd! From Glyph. Dear Commander Shepherd, some of the data you, al you found allowed me to research an upgrade for you. Simply access the terminal in Dr. Tassoni's office at your convenience, and you may choose how and when to implement it. Have a pleasant day. Glyph. Who's a Glyph? What's Glyph? She brought a boyfriend on board? Ferrin. Is that pet name for Ferrin? Priority mission, Eden Prime. Cerberus has attacked Eden Prime and is now occupying the colony. Alliance forces are stretched too thin right now to attempt to liberate the colony, but we've been doing what we can to covertly aid the local residents. In the process, we've learned that Cerberus has uncovered a major Prothean artifact. We don't know what it is, but it appears to be the reason for the attack on the colony. We need you to infiltrate the colony and recover the artifact. I would guess so. <clears throat> Seems like there might be a couple of other, you know, more important things to do. Unless it's the catalyst. Whatever the fuck a catalyst is, like a giant double A battery. Right, come on then. Joker, my man. How you been? Hey, Commander. You know, I had my doubts about the council. But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. <laughs> Are you really surprised? You've been with me since day one, man. They've spent years denying the threat. You think they'd be prepared now? I was kind of hoping that maybe they were planning in secret and just not telling you about it because, you know, Cerberus. Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them. You know, for all time. <laughs> yes. Good man. Commander. Oh, is that it? Commander. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Where's, uh, where's the ED? The ED ball. The ball that I can talk to. Oh, doesn't seem to be anywhere. Okay, so... <clears throat> Morden's room is now... A clusterfuck of different places. This over here was Jacob's room. Which is nothing. Wait, you added something. Who are you? Hello? Oh, is that it? You salute me. I can make you salute me whenever I want. <clears throat> so we've got the captain's cabin, we've got the war room, the crew deck, that was where Miranda was, engineering was where Tally was, who and what is a shuttle bay? Let's go down there, work our way up. Okay, cool. Uh, weapon upgrades? Predator, Shuriken, Avenger, Vindicator, Katana... <clears throat> Improved weapon damage, ammo capacity, and weight. Improves the weight, so it makes it lighter. <clears throat> well, the temptation... I mean, the katana was awesome. I'm assuming I'll get lots of money overall. Uh, we'll upgrade it twice. And we'll put... Well, we'll put two in the Predator as well. Those are the ones I'm going to be using. Is this just for me, or is this for my teammates as well? Weapons bench, cool. <gasps> He's one of the Fenris mechs. Hey there. 
Oh, he's adorable. You get in the elevator? You fucking off? Oh, I love him. I love him. I want to. I want him to be a. Who the fuck are you? Cortez. I'll get you in a minute. I want him to be a companion. I want him to be fully automated. I want him to be like Legion. Can I put Legion into that body? Uh, right. I need to know who the fuck you are. Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. We got news about our supply chains, Commander. At ease, dude. Chill. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. What's going on? Sorry to just jump in, Commander. There's so much to be done, I get caught up in the tasks at hand. He's always like that. You need to chill out, Esteban. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Esteban. Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? <laughs> I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dot ship. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M-44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. <laughs> to save the day, pendejo. Hey, got the job done. Also responsible for logistics. Making the sure dog. the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. I know, I know we're talking to him, and genuinely impressive character. But there's a little dog stomping around in the background, and I love him. Um, <laughs> there he is! There he is! Um, <clears throat> I mean, so he's, he's like a... A hobby kind of fighter pilot kind of thing. It's not his main job. Uh, but it just so happens we've got a bit of a savant with the fighter pilotiness. So, yeah. Get yourself in uh, Kodiak. And I will watch the dog go past. <laughs> anyway. Um, service record. Tell me about yourself. How long yourself. have you been with the Alliance? About ten years. I enlisted in First Fleet serving on the SSV Hawking. Flying F-61 Tridents. Mm. I love the Trident. It practically dances in low atmo. I spent as much time tinkering on my bird as flying her. Got a bit of a reputation. So, you can fly fighters and fix them. Yeah. And I got a knack for procurement, too. They were grooming me for CAG, but my skill set made me more valuable commanding a flight deck. They assigned me to the Normandy retrofit team about five months ago to oversee all cargo bay modifications. Okay, cool. So he used to be a fighter pilot, had amazing skills with procurement. Um, I don't really know what goes into procurement. I mean, I know it's the getting of things, basically. But uh, I guess charisma, uh, knowledge with budgeting and money and things like that. <clears throat> the ground vehicle. Please, I. this will be the best game ever made if I ask... Is there a Mako? And he uh, says, yes, we got rid of the Hammerhead. What happened to the M44 Hammerhead? Huh. It was sent to the tech labs for a retrofit. To More afford armor? mobility with such a small ESO core, its design sacrificed armor plating. The lab engineers are trying to improve that. <laughs> yes. the Reaper invasion, those labs are probably just a pile of rubble. Good. <laughs> Good. I hope all Hammerheads got covered in rubble and destroyed. Put a Mako on it. I don't care. Uh, shuttle. Uh, Kodiak shuttle, he said. The Kodiak seems a bit different. Like a bear. Good eyes, Commander. This is the UT-47A Kodiak. It's got an upgraded ESO core and prototype stealth technology based on the Normandy design. For quick drops, I can get you in and out virtually undetected. She flies like a brick. So that's why you need a good pilot. <laughs> oh, what is it? Is it Space Cowboys? Clint Eastwood... And, um, oh, the guy that's in Men in Black. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, basically it flies like a brick. The The shuttle flies like a brick, so you have to remember that as you're trying to set it down. Um, <clears throat> I mean, fair enough. Like, you are basically, oh, I wonder if you're, you and Joker are going to butt heads. 
you've probably not met. You you were drafted in for the retrofits, and Joker was probably turfed out for that. It was meant to be Anderson's. There's no saying that Joker was going to be the pilot. So, uh, I wonder if you and Joker are going to really hate each other. Uh, Armory, tell me about the ship. Do you maintain this armory? I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. <laughs> Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. You know you love the show, <laughs> Just working out. The first retrofit we did was to move the armory down from deck two. I'm not sure what Cerberus engineers were thinking. Now you get off the elevator, pick your gear, and head right into the shuttle. Makes sense. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back to the Alliance, Commander. Do right. Yeah, I did read a comment saying that um, James was Freddie Prince Jr., which I fucking love, because that means anyone here that's watched Friends, realistically, should be most people, um, it means that James Vega, Mr. Macho James Vega, is Sandy in Friends, the male nanny who has the little puppets and teaches Joey recorder and makes madeleines that are lighter than air. Um, I absolutely love that. I know Freddie Prince Jr. has been in a lot of other stuff as well, but ah, oh, it's great. That guy's got range. Um, family back home. We're stationed on Earth. Wife, kids. You have family there. I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The collectors took out the whole colony. I'd rather not talk about it. I'm sorry? Is that the first male gay character we've got in this game? Good. Fantastic. Sorry your husband died. That's dark. But inclusivity, that's awesome. Uh, well, if you'd rather not talk about it, I'm not going to press you on it, man. Keep up the hard work. But don't kill yourself. Yeah, chill out. Yes, Commander. We've got to grab a beer together later on. I genuinely think that is the first gay character. Oh, wow. Uh, casual. So we got normal. Alliance. Pretty standard. Pretty boring. That's very Udina. That's Counselor. That's Mad Max. That's just weird. Um... I mean, that's just kind of armoured version of the first one. Oh, it's the hoodie. It's the hoodie. And the leather jacket. Oh, which... I kind of want to... My trench coat's gone, which I'm not actually happy at. I like the Neo trench coat. No. We're going to have the hoodie now, and then right towards the end, we're going to have the leather jacket, the glasses. And we're going to make this cool. Uh, armor set. Cerberus Ajax armor. No, that looks shit. Uh, helmet. No helmet. Chest. Uh, we've got... Oh, it does do stats. Shield regeneration, health boost. No, I want health boost. Shoulders. I've only got one of them. Melee damage. I don't want to do melee damage. Legs. I've only got one of them. Material. Uh, I'll do the... Oh, kind of like that, actually. That's kind of cool. Pattern color. I am going to honor my... Tiefling Artificer. And oh wait, hang on. I can't make. Can I not change the material color? Oh yeah, tints. Okay. There we go. That's about right. It's purple. It's green. Oh, we've got secondary typing here. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> I'm going to be singing from the back, so let's get the right colour tramp stamp. Uh. Let's see if we can go green, actually. 
Yeah, we'll go green. We'll pop it out with a little bit more green. Lights. Oh, God. He's got lights on the back. Oh, that's cool. Green. Fuck it. Green for go. And there you go. What a clusterfuck of a moron. Uh, I wish we could change the colour of the casual outfit, actually. I'd love a different coloured hoodie or a different coloured leather jacket would be cool. Uh, that's a shame we can't do that. But that'll do. Right. More people. Just guns are plenty. The Kodiak bear. Mr. Vague. Oh, he's just working out. Gotta get the ladies. Are you sure? Like, is that even there to support your weight? Like, I'm pretty sure that's just rigging for the Normandy. Stop working out, man. Hey, Shep. Hmm? With the castle. Same as usual. Non-committal. Unhelpful. Bet they still wanted you to help them out, no? Yeah. We're gonna rescue a Turian Primarch from Palamon. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Never been to the Turian homeworld. Neither have I. <sighs> you down here for a reason? <sighs> Maybe I just like watching you work out, man. You don't know me. I don't need a reason. Is that flirty? I kind of want to do it if it's flirty. I want to see who's gay in this. I want to see who my romance options are as quick as possible. Um, I thought I'd come and say hi. Just came down to talk. Great. <clears throat> Not sure what there is to talk about. <clears throat> you already know my service record. <clears throat> I don't, actually. I didn't have access to personnel records when we met. Right. Forgot about that. Well... Think you can dance and talk at the same time? If you're talking romantic... Slow dance. Or fighting... It's a yes to both. Or either. I don't mind. But yes, I can dance. Um, I I also read uh, a comment about a an anime, which I don't know why I've never heard of an, a Mass Effect am anime. I thought that would be huge. Um, it's it's called Paragon something. Sorry, Paragon something. Um, in my head, I thought I know I'll watch it on stream, or you know, and doing doing a video, and then. For some reason, it never clicked in my head. Oh, yeah, copyrights, I think. <laughs> yeah, probably can't just illegally stream it. That, that's fine. So uh, I haven't watched it yet. Um, I will watch it in the coming week. Uh, I think it's on Amazon or something along those lines. I'll have a check. If not, I'll see how much it is. It's not a problem. But uh, I'm genuinely surprised that I've never heard of a Mass Effect anime. I thought that'd be huge. Um, but I... You know, if you're flirting with me or want to punch me, I'm I'm fine with either. It's I fine. think I can handle it. Let's go, man. Okay, loco. Let's dance. Loco. Don't push your luck, Vega. With age comes wisdom and rank. Bare knuckle boxing. You sound like my old CEO. <laughs> I've got to put gloves on. Oh yeah. And who was that? Captain Tony. He was a hard-ass son of a bitch, but a good leader. <laughs> I'm going renegade. This whole fight, renegade. What do you mean, was? Died. With most of my squad. Protecting a civilian colony from a collector attack. And the colony? It was either them, or the intel we had on the collectors. Intel we could have used to destroy them. I chose the intel. Rightly so. Tough choice. But it was the right call. You think so? I would have done the same. 
That's what's funny. You were doing the same thing. You took out the collectors. We never needed that intel. Oh. You didn't know. You can't blame yourself, Vega. Who says I'm blaming myself? Oh, <laughs> you're a shrink too? Nope. But that stunt back on Mars was reckless. You're lucky to be alive. So survivor's guilt. So? So, maybe you don't care if you live or die. Or maybe. <clears throat> I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war. Oh. <clears throat> Good to hear it. But you sacrificed yourself, or my ship, needlessly? That's unacceptable. Thanks for the pep talk. Anytime. Hey, thanks for the dance, Loco. Loco. I like that, I genuinely do. Loco, huh? I can think of worse things to call you. <laughs> as long as you remember who's in charge. It'll be true. You can call me whatever you want. Oh, I won't forget. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Beat the shit out of each other. He's got survivor's guilt, but that is... Oh, I feel bad. Because, yeah, it, it's not at any point... <clears throat> it's not just one team trying to do something. Yeah, we were going after the Collectors, but the Alliance was still doing stuff. They were trying to get stuff. They, people were being killed, sacrificed, tough decisions made every day. As he said, he got the intel, he sacrificed his, his commander, his team, or, or whatever, and only to then go, guys, give me the best medal you've got. I've got intel that could help to defeat the collectors. Oh, Shepard just killed him. That's fine. You didn't need to do that. There's a... <clears throat> There's a horror movie. I think it's called The Mist. And right at the end, sorry, spoilers if you've not seen it, it's quite old. Um, right at the end, the guy's like, oh, okay, the mist is going to get us. I think it's called the mist. And um, he turns around, he's got a gun with two bullets. And he shoots his wife and kid. And then goes, right, there you go. <clears throat> Take me. And walks into the mist. And the, the US Army are coming the other way because they've effectively won or are beating back the uh the aliens and the guy just shot his wife and kid and then gets to live himself and like that's the worst possible thing you can imagine <clears throat> it's kind of what he did there like he's like a sacrifice i got the intel and we don't need it it's like, <laughs> so i kind of feel for him that that's hey again what's up you're still bleeding, man. Um, previous mission. Any you mentioned view? the mission you had against the collectors. What happened? Pretty much what I said. Things went poo bar, and <laughs> I was one of the few to make it out. I like poo bar. You want the rest of the story? You're gonna have to get me really drunk, or, or what? That's about it. Sorry, Commander. Nah. Just not interested in talking about that. No, no worries. Next topic. Not, not gonna push you on that if you don't want to say it. Uh, I do worry about you though. Like. That stunt on Mars was hilarious out of game, but in game, like, you're just flipping a coin with life every day. You had a hard time leaving Earth. You still want to head back? Hell yeah, but I get it now. It's not where I'd be most useful. Not yet, anyway. We'll get back there. Good. I know. And I'll do whatever it takes to get us there, Commander. You know what? Maybe no more shuttle crashes. No promises now that I've gotten the taste for it. <laughs> Besides, I like to keep Esteban on his toes. When we get back to Earth, I'll make a promise now. I'm taking you. I'm assuming there's a mission on Earth. I'm assuming we go back there. Whatever we do, I'm going to take you along with me. That is a promise. Which I hopefully will remember. Um, what about your family? Anyone left on Earth? You got family back on Earth? Yeah, an uncle. Retired military. Got a few cousins I haven't heard from in a while. You and your uncle close? Yep. He was the reason I joined the Marines and was about the only good thing in my life after my mom died. No dad? He's there. Somewhere. But I'm not sure I'd call him family. 
Not anymore. Now the villain. Find out how my uncle's doing though. I can catch up with your uncle. I genuinely, I am listening out for and also looking for the word in all the com in all the conversations. Um, if I hear any female Turkish people. <laughs> I'm literally like, you, you, you're the one Caden wanted. Um, I'm determined to try and find her. I don't know if he has to be in the game to, to sort of see her. But um, yeah, if it, that in the first game, it's like, oh, this this girl, this Turkish girl, I like. And it's like, that's got to show up at some point. Uh, nicknames. I don't mind being called Loco, but why? What's with you and the nicknames? It's just my way of remembering people. Some people just don't match their names, you know? So <laughs> I just give them a new one. So I'm a I like that. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty crazy, but the shit you've done <laughs> makes me look sane. I think it's very fair. Uh, what do you know about Cortez? I take it you and Lieutenant Cortez know each other. Yeah, Esteban did a stint on Fell Prime where me and my squad were stationed. I caught up with him on Earth a few months back. He's a good guy. Just don't tell him I said so. It'd go to his head. You are bleeding from so many places. Uh, I will catch you later. You, later. <clears throat> you bet. Wish I had the um, cuts on me still. I'd like to go back up and see people and be just bleeding out of my face. Like, yeah, me and James Chad. Uh, let's go up to engineering. Okay. We have got where Grunt was. Can't go in. Oh, Zaid's room. Zaid? Oh, the reporter. How's your new assignment working out, Allers? Fairly normal, except for the unshackled AI, Matriarch Benezia's daughter, and the communicator that can reach Earth. Yeah. The first two, I can deal with. That last one gets my attention. So what are you asking for, exactly? Anything from Earth is the lead story right now. That's not opinion, it's fact. Maybe I can pass on a few non-classified progress updates. Seriously? You just doubled my ratings. I don't need FaceTime, just a data upload. Ooh. Focus on Cerberus. Focus on Cerberus because we need people to know there's two threats. Everyone already knows there's a Reaper threat. They, like If they don't, they're stupid. We need to let people know that there is another threat because I think the catalyst might be that Reaper, the human Reaper thing in the second game. So I'm thinking we need to... Definitely tell people that Cerberus are the problem because we need to kill them. Your story is Cerberus. They're a clear and present danger to everything we try to do. Alien audiences will hate them. Hmm. So they're traitors to Earth and the galaxy. Yep. I wouldn't have to torque it much. <clears throat> you do have an inside track on Cerberus. All right. You feed me your info and I'll keep fighting. Everyone sees the Reapers. Everyone knows what the Reapers are doing need to keep the enemy that no one sees jack not that and she's not the enemy that no one sees we need to keep the enemy that no one sees sort of in in line and sort of make sure people know about him model of sovereign is that it is that jack's bench no jack's bench isn't there anymore uh, what what was that Turian cruiser. There was something running along the ground. That <gasps> I know that squeak. Squeak, give it, give it, give it, you stupid fucking. Ah! I know that squeak. Where is it? Yes, space hamster. Is that my space hamster, or is there an infestation? I'm okay with an infestation. But if it's mine, as Kronk would say in Emperor's New Groove, squeak, squeak em, squeak, squeak em. Um. Uh, 
it's funny actually because I completely forgot. I I in my head I've been going Chakwas and um uh Sekra Kelly Kelly Chambers. Like that. Um <clears throat> completely forgot about these two. So uh yeah. My bad. Uh who's running this place then? I saw a dude. Who the fuck are you? Engineer Adams. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. In the first game. Maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams. What are you doing? The one that liked Tally. I was put in charge of the drive core retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR1 made me an obvious choice. Yeah. So what do you think of our SR2? She's incredible. There's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, is that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back, and I'm sorry for that. No need to apologize, but what was your reason for refusing? Why didn't you join us? I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. I didn't trust that it was really you. I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. That's fair. Also, as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? I mean, I don't want to... Like, you just left your post. Like, you're no longer there as you're talking to me. Um, there is absolutely no need for an apology. You have your views. You were asked to come here. You said no. I respect that. There's no need to join me. I wanted you to join me. Your Alliance first. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Commander. Glad to be aboard. Yeah. Uh, family on Earth? Is your family okay? My parents are serving on Viridian Zenith, an Alliance agricultural vessel. My sister is a navigator on the SSV Benjamin Davis. Wow. Happy to report that both vessels are safely under Hackett's command. Nice. Okay. Military family. Uh, how's the Normandy doing? Does the new Normandy stack up to the old SR-1? <laughs> stack up. It blows the old ship away. The Tantalus drive core has been completely overhauled. The SR2 might be nearly twice the size, but the new drive core is three times bigger. This ship can fly. <laughs> that said, Cerberus isn't too high on safety. If pushed past her limits, this core would vent into engineering. Guess it gives my team incentive to keep her well balanced during a firefight. Do your job or get vaporized. Pretty much. Your team? I noticed you upgraded the kinetic barriers with cyclonic technology. Should help reduce the draw when under missile fire. Hopefully that means fewer vaporized engineers. The IES stealth system is significantly improved. It can handle a higher blue shift of our emissions. And that means? We should be able to drop out of FTL without triggering every sensor in range. Very handy for stealth reconnaissance. All in all, the Normandy is a marvel of engineering. Cool. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> as long as... um. Yeah, as long as engineers aren't being vaporized. You talked about your team, but you're on your own down here. What do you think of Edie? We had a good talk during the retrofit. A little strange at first, talking shop with an AI. AI? I thought Edie posed as a VI to keep the likes of you from unplugging her. Yeah, but I saw through her. Have you seen her hardware? Processing power is off <laughs> the charts. And then there were the problems that kept fixing themselves. If I hadn't had her pegged, I would have sworn I was losing it. You never expressed any skepticism, Lieutenant Adams. My CCTV camera. I figured I'd better play it safe with the Cerberus AI, Edie. No offense. None taken. As long as you keep your fingers out of my cognizance processors. <laughs> In the beginning, I tried disconnecting her from key processes without giving myself away. Easier said than done. But Joker seemed to trust her. And in time, I saw her advantages. Even grew to like her. Hey, dude, I'll set you up if you like. You can put your fingers wherever you want if you get on with Carry it. On, Adams. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, well. Adams and Evie. I mean, that's Evie, E.T. <laughs> Adam and Eve. There you go. Uh, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, crew quarters in the middle area. And this will be the last place before... What's this play? Carlton Tux, Charles Presley. This is off Caden Elenko. Kelly Chambers. Hmm. 
Rosamund Draven, Talitha Draven. Family? Partners? Karen Chakwas. Kenneth Donnelly. Not okay with this. Rupert Gardner. That's the chef. Gabriella Daniels. Daniels and Donnelly. Am I going to have a reminder of who? How many fucking spaces are left? Right, that's my new aim. That board, that's it. No one else is putting anything fucking on there. Model of the Destiny Ascension. I wonder if it's the post or pre explosion. Oh, fuck yes. We are playing cards later on, gentlemen. Is there a bar? Like, fuck yes. I'm pretty sure. Didn't Jacob said we'll get a bar on the new Normandy? <laughs> There's Jacob. Let's have a drink, my man. Nope. Yep. Toilets. <laughs> I forgot about that. Women's toilets don't even unlock anymore. That's that's sensible. I like that. Uh, Doctor Michelle. Yeah. Hey. Hello there, Commander. How are you settling in, Doctor? Good. I've been busy restocking supplies and running diagnostics. It's nice working alone in a fresh lab. I get to set up everything just the way I want. Anyway, now that you're here, I'd like to examine you. Why? Do you have concerns about my health? You have an extensive number of cybernetic implants. Oh, yeah. I died. Cerberus spent a fortune bringing me back. I know. I just want to make sure everything checks out. It'll take no time. Yeah, absolutely fine. Please. It doesn't hurt to be safe. It won't hurt, will I'd it? like to know if I'm no, falling no, apart. No, invasive. I just need to run some implant diagnostics and take readings of your immune system. It looks like your implants have a synthetic protein overlay. That's allowed your body to integrate them quite nicely. Must be from the procedure I had done to help heal my scarring. Must be. I bet that wasn't cheap. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. No. Everything looks It wasn't fine. cheap. May I help you at all? Uh, need any medical supplies? Do we have enough medical supplies? Luckily, the med bay was one of the first areas the retrofit team stocked. That's fortunate. Who knows how long we'll have to be self-sufficient. That's fair enough. Do you miss the Citadel? Sorry for drawing you away. You really didn't want to go. How does working on a military vessel compare to your Citadel clinic? It's a completely different experience. I like that I have fewer patients under my care. I can really focus and get to know each person. True. But the workday never ends here. I don't get to go home. I'm always on call. But you're making a real difference. So by being here, I'm making a difference too. True. But you've got... Let, I mean, I don't know how many exactly. There's obviously people we're not seeing. Maybe 50 people overall, including all people that are working here in the background. Let's say max 50. <clears throat> They're not always badgering you. So in theory, you do get more time. You just can't go home, home. Uh, what about your family? Did you leave anyone behind? Do you have any family? My parents are on Earth. Geneva. The news isn't good. I'm sorry. But my brother is safe on the Citadel. I'll cool. count my blessings where I can. Didn't mention a uh, boyfriend or husband? Just let me know if you need anything. Garrus will be interested. I will. Garrus, like, shot a dude for you. Uh, reassign power bonuses. Reassign powers. We still got that hunk of junk in here. Burn it before it comes back to life. Could be regenerating as we speak. It was a doctor. Doctor who? We don't know. Come on, Garrus. Come on. Come on, Garrus. Garrus! Well, that's annoying. Why is there no Garrus? <clears throat> Seems like everyone uh, everyone went to Splitsville when um, I got incarcerated for minor genocide. So 
Hello, Liara. Commander Shepard, it's a pleasure to see you again. You called it Glyph. You're the drone from the Shadow Brokers. That's here. what Glyph is. Sony now refers to me as Glyph instead of Info Drone, ninety-five percent of the time. If Blinky. you have a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to a terminal in her office. You have your own Blinky, Liara. It analyzes information packages. If you find any useful data, I can research upgrades for you. And what should I be looking for? I'll inform you if you found relevant data. When you do, return to this terminal for your choices. In the meantime, Dr. Tassoni would like to speak with you. Have a pleasant day. And you too, thank you. The meeting was less than ideal. At least the council can't deny the Reapers exist. But I'm not sure how much comfort that is while they bicker over which portion of the galaxy to save. <laughs> I'm flattered, I think. That's fair. <clears throat> armor mod kit. Ferran has persuaded his contacts to ship an armor mod kit to the Normandy. Technically illegal in Citadel space, the kit's Omnigel or converter and manufacturing, manufacturing fabricator can make a one-time modification to Shepard's armor, improving shield strength or adding thermal clips. Shield strength. Just, of course. A little picture of Tally there. Liara, how you doing? Looks like you brought more than just that drone from your ship. A few things were necessary. I'd be a very silent shadow broker without data feeds. That's fair. So you have access to your resources? What I can get, we'll need it to research this Prothean device. Until we understand precisely what it does, it's far too dangerous to use. Did they even get close to finishing? Did the Protheans actually complete this weapon? You mean, will it work? They wouldn't have poured their last resources into this device if they thought otherwise. But we really need to find out point. just what kind of weapon they left us. It is a good point. Yeah, this was their last roll of the dice. They just didn't get to roll it. Uh, agreed. Yeah. It'd be nice to know we're not kids playing around with a loaded gun. <laughs> Absolutely. The damage it could cause if it backfired is unthinkable. But. People were finally starting to listen before the Reapers came. If we'd had a little more time, maybe Earth wouldn't. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. There's hope for us. There's still a lot of people alive down there. Yes, John. I have to remember that. You will. It's the war we warned everyone about for years. And if I know you, Shepard, you'll make them proud. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll do my best. This terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. Dr. Tassoni has granted you access. I want Blinky to speak. That's your one job, Liara. Focus everything on that. Give Blinky a voice. Glyph, remind me to clean up these old notes. Perhaps reviewing them will lead to something useful for the Prothean device. Liara. 2171. The University of Ceres agreed to sponsor me at the Prothean dig on Dretirop. Very exciting. Professor Henel is heading the expedition herself. Maybe I can even ask for her opinion on my thesis outline. Attachment thesis on Prothean first contact protocols. 2174. I believe Dr. Joshua Joshon was right to suggest that the Prothean artifacts we unearthed are from the Third Age, not the Fourth. What an embarrassing mistake. At least he seemed to approve the rest of the paper. Attachment. Paper on a comparison of Prothean technology to modern Asari circuit logic. 2183 Part 1. I'm going on the Therum expedition. I never thought I gained permission to visit the Prothean ruins there, but the University of Ceres must have secured the funding after all. Now to pack. Attachment. Paper on the end of the Prothean Empire. Part 2. Goddess, this human shepherd has the key to comprehending the Protheans on an instinctual, subconscious level. If only I could have been there when the commander touched the beacon on Eden Prime. I'll try to learn more about the cipher on board the Normandy. The involvement of the Reapers is troubling, to say the least. Attachment. Paper on the end of the Prothean Empire with correction notes. 2185. I reviewed the old Shadow Broker's footage of the Collectors. It's chilling to know that they're the Protheans' husks. At least nothing sentient could possibly remain after what the Reapers did to them. Attachment paper on Prothean biology. So the Shadow Broker knew. She found that in the Shadow Broker's stuff. So the Shadow Broker knew about that. Message from Operative Ferron to the Broker. I made contact with Tazik yesterday. 
The look on his face was priceless. He's not happy you put me in charge of scouting the Terminus systems, but he's doing a good job of keeping us alive. I've never seen so many pirates and mercs on edge. The black market's unreliable, and it's getting harder to make contact with suppliers. The Alliance won't be able to rely on it as a source of crucible materials for long if things get worse. Some of the other operatives think we should just cut our losses now, but I just keep asking them, when did the odds ever stop the broker? Theron. The Theron's working for her. That's pretty damn cool. Please enjoy your day. Glyph, I am jealous of you. Right. <clears throat> the video in two seconds will go over to two hours exactly. I can't remember the last time we had a two hour video, if I have. So, uh, I think that's all the floors done. Uh, if not, we will finish things up uh, next time. Go up, uh, up to our cabin and then go to Palavan to rescue a Turian ambassador, uh, leader, prime minister, president, whatever you want to call it. Um, today has been a non combat kind of chill day, but. Oh, it's already coming together so much, and I love it. And now I've got Dr. Michelle on board, who I've not seen since the first game. Um, I don't know if there was an opportunity to kill her in the first game, or who we'd have, if we would have any, if I said no to her. But that is just outstanding, and I love this game. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a great week, and all the best. Stay tuned for next episode. As soon as I learn how to do this, there you go.